Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Morning Fog with Dr. Mark and Liz. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Mark. How are you today? Absolutely stellar. The energy's high and we're ready to go. And, uh, you know, every day we sit back and we think about what it is that we're going to sort of talk, talk about, wax poetic. And I was thinking that we've had a lot of people we've needed to help work through a process of forgiveness and particularly just understanding what forgiveness is and what it isn't. And thought maybe you'd be worthwhile to spend a little time doing that today. Love it. So why, why do we think it's really important? Because most people don't understand that forgiveness is not for the other person. It is for you. When we don't forgive and we hold on to the hate, the anger, the resentment, all we're doing is hurting ourselves. We're weighing ourselves down with a 2000 pound weight that the other person doesn't even know. So it's not even impacting them at all. I mean, a, per so, a perfect metaphor for that is it's like drinking poison, like drinking arsenic and expecting the other person to suffer or die. It's never going to happen. No. So you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm not you know, ready to forgive. How do I know if I'm ready to forgive? And so that's why we get to this point where we say it's, it's so important if you understand you're not forgiving for them, you're doing it for you. And why? Because challenge yourself, ask yourself, how has holding on to this anger impacted you? How has been holding on to the resentment impacted you? How are you showing up for other people in your life because you're still so resentful of another human in your life? And what is it getting in the way of? Well, frankly, your happiness, your it, enjoyment of life. It is your happiness. And, you know, one of the places that people get stuck is they get stuck on, well, I was always told forgive and forget, forgive and forget. And the fact of the matter is that it, you can't forget. You know, as a, as a physician, I liken this to when a patient has a surgery. And in forgiving, the pain goes away. But even if you're five years, 10 years, 30 years out from an operation, you can look and you have a scar. You can't forget that it happened. You can't not see the scar that was there, but the scar doesn't have to cause you pain anymore. We don't forgive and forget because we don't forget. But when we forgive, we can move past. And even if that's only for us, as you said, it's not necessarily for the other person. We'll talk about that part in a moment, but the foundation of forgiving is for you. Right. And, and what happens when we're in a moment where we're losing control of our emotions. We're starting to feel that, well, I don't know. I know when I get really upset, I get like this rush to kind of go through my body and I kind of get a little hot. And so, and even my shoulders get a little tingly. And then I know that I am feeling something real, a really strong emotion that I, that's amping me up. What is something that you can do if that's happening to you? We do something called the three deep breaths. And what we love about the three deep breaths is that it's the best gift you can have in your back pocket. It takes about a minute and 20 seconds and it helps reduce anxiety. It lowers blood pressure. It disrupts wherever you are in the moment of th those emotions. And it's very calming. So it's what are also, three deep breaths? It's also physiologic because there's you so know, I was going to say, what are Mark? Tell us what three deep breaths are. If there's so many people who teach breath work that actually fights against your own body. So, you know, oh, look, uh, there's a lot of different ways out there. There's one fellow that teaches this one way of sort of this huffing method. There's what's called box breathing, which is a one-to-one -one inspiratory and expiratory cycle. The, the fact is that your body doesn't want to work that way. Actually, in the ICU, if we put someone on a one-to-one -one inspiration and expiration, we typically need to sedate them because it's not a comfortable breathing manner. We exhale about twice as long as we inhale. So when we do the three deep breaths or the four, seven, eight technique, we exhale twice as long as the inhale, which is physiologic. You're getting in sync with your body 
instead of actually doing something that pushes against your normal body rhythm. And that's really important when you're trying to calm down. So this is why the three deep breaths is the way it works. As you said, it's a minute and 20 seconds, but really if you don't have the time to do three cycles, you can simply do one cycle right there. And it's always there. You can be in your proverbial birthday suit and you can pull it out of an invisible pocket and use it. It's that easy, that simple. There's no money, there's no prep, there's no tools, there's nothing. It's just something that you can learn to do. And we really want you to understand that when you are holding on to all these strong emotions and you cannot release them or you haven't allowed yourself to release them, you are robbing yourself of happiness. You're robbing yourself of peace. You're robbing yourself of enjoying your life. All we want for everybody who's listening to this is to understand, do not give your happiness to someone else who has done an injustice to you by holding on to that anger, that resentment, that Mark's favorite word, vitriol, you are only hurting you. So if there's anything you could get out of this podcast is to really start to be mindful of how you're feeling when your emotions are starting to amp up. Who is it that, you know, what's, what, what role are you playing around in your head? What, what loop is going on? Who is it about? Why are you allowing yourself to continue to carry these emotions? How are they not serving you? And what can you do to start to disrupt them and help to heal yourself? Forgiveness is key. 100%. So, you know, um, even distant wounds, when we've kept them, magnify, they grow. They're like a cancer. They eat at you. They destroy you. They grow. They don't just sit there. And that causes, as you said, some internal anger. So to get yourself in that position of being able to step back and think logically as well as emotionally about forgiving, you mentioned the three deep breaths. So, you know, we will do another podcast on the exact technique, but basically the three deep breaths is to sit comfortably and to breathe slowly in for four seconds through your nose. And there's a purpose for that, but breathe slowly four seconds in, hold your breath at full inspiration for seven seconds, exhale slowly through pursed lips for eight seconds, pause briefly, and then do the cycle again for three times. It's incredibly powerful. And again, look for another podcast where we'll actually take some time to go through some of the background and everything else. But it's a really positive way to approach, to center, to quiet yourself in a position where you feel like you're getting amped up, particularly if you're starting to think about some of the injustices or the pains that were brought to you. We'll go through some other techniques later, but this is just an understanding of what forgiveness is and how important it is. And again, the primary understanding is it's, it's for you, it's not for them. It's not to forget. And by the way, forgiveness doesn't require reconciliation. Reconciliation means that you're in a position that both you and the other person want to have a relationship. The other person gives a true and authentic apology, owns what they did, and says that they are never going to try to do that again. I say try because we're all humans and we all can make mistakes, but they are truthful in wanting to make a better relationship. Some people you never want to reconcile with. Some people, they have given themselves the reason to have you excuse them from your life permanently. That's okay. You don't need to reconcile. As a matter of fact, you can forgive someone who you never know, someone who did something to you, stole something. You can forgive someone who is now past. They're dead in their grave and you can forgive them. Why? Because forgiveness is for you. And that's a really important concept to be able to step away from this, let it go. And 
you know, a lot of our clients, Liz, when we talk to them, describe forgiveness in a in a certain way, don't they? Yeah, they talk about it like it's a weight being lifted off their shoulders or a bird being free from a cage. And it really, really is. As somebody's had to do it in her own life, that is what it feels like. It's very freeing. And when you can really find the the logic around why it's important to forgive for you. The logic is, again, and we said this earlier, but I'll repeat it again, because you're holding on to this grudge, you're holding on to this resentment, you're holding on to this hate, it's only hurting you. It's not doing anything to the other person because you're not in contact with the other person. Oh. And if you are, you know, they still don't know how you are internalizing what they did to you. So if there's anything that we could do to make it really clear, it is a gift to yourself to forgive. And by the way, as a physician who went through severe moral injury and burnout, it was a critical step in my being able to heal and to recover and to move forward because there are people who are unknown in the system or in an organizational structure that do things that hurt you. Nurses know this, law enforcement officers, firefighters, other first responders, other physicians. And you don't know who they are, but you need to forgive. Otherwise, it sits inside you. For me, again, on an organizational level, there were people I know who literally wounded myself and my colleagues. And I needed to be able to forgive them for what they did, to put that aside. I had to make a decision that I wanted to no longer be like Marley in A Christmas Carol and drag along this chain of, of vitriol, of, of dislike of, of the wounds. And I need to forgive. I, as I said, won't forget them. And many of them are excused from my life. Many of them I would never trust again. But the fact is that I walk free of that. And that's how Liz and I know how important this is. And some of the colleagues we work with, a gentleman in a university who studies this for a living, a pastor who's helped to put together a program, non-denominational program for people who are suffering with cancer who needed to have forgiveness. We know how powerful it is. And we know how troubling it is when you think you have to forget and reconcile. And well, I can't reconcile because they're not there. But you need to put that aside because you are in a position to free yourself, to heal yourself, to walk unencumbered. And you deserve that. And the people you love and the people who love you deserve you to show up as your best you. So thank you for listening to this episode. We hope you found it really informative and helpful. If you're looking to dig deeper into it, obviously there are tons of articles out there or reach out to us because we, we would love to talk to you. We'd love to help. It's so important. And uh, we, again, we thank you for listening to another episode of, of Morning Fog with Dr. Mark and Liz, and uh, we'll catch you the next time. Bye, Mark. Bye, Liz. Have a great day.